she's completely unexplainable. You think she's a good girl, but once you get to know her, you realize she's everything, she's crazy, she's funny, she's honest, and you never know what she'll do next. This is great. I'm so glad you came back. I'm here with my guest, Ken Bieberman, and he is famous as far as art goes. I don't know if you uh, frequent the Art Basel shows, but Ken, tell us a little bit about, how, first of all, how did we meet Ken? I met because somehow or another I got your, on Facebook, Being Tracy, and and I you got looped into my page. I don't know. I, I was it was on my Facebook. I, you didn't mean I to, but you, you're following I me. I think you friended me or something, and I just kept it. And and then I saw you at a New Year's party like a year ago, and I go, "Oh my God, it's being Tracy." <laughs> this happens frequently. And then what? What? What else did you say? You said to your wife. Hold the camera and take our picture. Yes, and she got kind of How mad. did that go over? No, it didn't go over well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She was like, who, who, why are you making such a big deal about this woman? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So this year, I went to the same party, and I saw him again with his wife, and I got a chance this time to talk to his wife, who's amazing. And we really connected. And then what happened was she was really happy when I didn't remember his name right off, right? right. And then he's like, what? You don't know my name? Like, don't you follow art? You know, come on. I mean, I'm famous, you know? So anyway, uh, then, then he proceeded to show me a little bit about his art. And I got really intrigued because it's amazingly beautiful art. I don't know if you can show that video as we're talking, um, Ben, but we're going to talk a little bit about your art. I just was wondering, you know, when did you know you had an artistic talent? When did it show up in your life that you're like, ah, I think I got something I was here? Maybe three, four. And my mother is an artist. She, she was uh, like, she got this scholarship at Art Students League when she was young and she was in New York and she had an amazing career as an interior designer. Okay. And and then she like put me in these college art classes when I was like ten years old with adults, because I, but I didn't know if I had anything special at the time. You know, I didn't think it was that great, but it was it was something that uh, I had that I didn't even know I had. And when did you find out though you actually had something here? Well, I knew I was a pretty good artist by the time I was in my teens, but they they took me out of school and put me in the newspaper and gave me <laughs> high school credit for working at the newspaper as an illustrator. Right. And then... Uh, so how old were you when you worked for the newspaper? 17, 18. Okay. As an illustrator, and, and then what? And then I... And then I went to work for my mother. And what did she have an A interior design? Oh, okay. And I went work to work with her. Okay. And then um, my parents retired when they were forty. They bought a yacht and they moved to the Virgin Islands. Wow, that's nice. And I had no home. <laughs> <laughs> did you have brothers and sisters? I have a brother. You have a brother. He's a designer. He's okay. And so your parents said, We're, goodbye, we're yeah. leaving on our yacht now. Yeah, so I, I went We've to, worked hard enough at 40. I went off to art school. I went to Ringling School of Art. Oh, that's intriguing. Yeah, so, so I graduated in 83, and I had nowhere to go. I had no home to go back to or any. So I went Miami. Okay. So I... At what age did you move to Miami? I was 23, and I ended up in South Beach. Oh, well, I lived in South Beach for five years. I know well, exactly I, what that was like. I was you there, were there much earlier than I me, I'm sure. I was there in the early 80s, and it was a dilapidated mess full of right. elderly people. Okay. And there was, like, only a couple of places you could go. to. So everybody went to the Carlisle every night. And, and That then, was still there when I was there. And then there was Club Z, and everybody went there. Okay. So... I lived on Ocean Drive for like eight years. Really? Where on Ocean Drive? I lived uh, at 13th in Ocean, and I paid. I know exactly where that I is. I paid $400 a month 
to live on the ocean on the on the ground floor front. How much? Four four hundred. Four hundred. You paid four hundred dollars a month. Yes. And you had a one bedroom place or a studio. It was a one bedroom. Oh my gosh. And then that's the difference. And then I moved to down the street near the news cafe, and I had the same thing, but I was on the second floor. And, Right now, that same apartment would probably go for what thousands of dollars a month. Ten thousand a month, maybe. Yeah, it's crazy. Maybe more than that. Yeah, and then uh, and then I left South Beach because it it played its course after how many years? Like in the early nineties. And had you begun producing your art? You know, had you well. I was doing all the nightclubs and restaurants. I had a hand in everything that happened, and I help, helped create the, the conditions for the artistic renaissance Okay. in South Beach. Okay. And so it, all of a sudden, Miami Vice was there, and they shot the first episode in my front porch. Oh, yeah. They had a bunch of old people lined up there that they, as extras. They put them in the lounge chairs. Oh, my gosh. And then... <laughs> That must have been an exciting time. And then that guy from Starsky and Hutch was directing it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And and then uh, Entertainment Tonight was on my front porch. That's with, amazing. And then I never seen or heard of uh, Don Johnson before. Really? And he had his stunt double. And there was two of them. And I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and I don't know, about three, four months later, I'm on Miami Vice. You were on it? I was on it. For what? I played a junkie. Oh, okay. And I was like in bed with this hooker, but okay. it wasn't a hooker. It was like, right. And, <laughs> and we were like smoking pot, fake pot. Okay. And then uh, they busted down the door. Freeze, Miami Vice. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. So then, so then I left South Beach and I moved in to... Aventura area, which wasn't Aventura then. It was like North Miami Beach, Sunny okay. Isles. And and I think I sold a painting to every single person that was there. Where? In that area. At in the Aventura. Time. Because at the time, it wasn't like as big as it was. And I had a lot of friends, like thousands of people were friends. We're still friends. Now, when Art Basel started, did they immediately invite you? Or was this something? What, I, don't, I don't know when that started. Well... It wasn't exactly Art Basel, I have to say. It, I, I, do, I do the Spectrum show in Wynwood during Ar Ar Miami Art Week. Okay. Which is Art Basel's I've really been to the for show. blue chip, blue chip. Okay. And it's all pre-sold and it's all... Oh. It's not really where you're going to go to buy or sell art. art. Okay. It's, okay. It's a, well, what's the difference between Spectrum and... Art Basel, just that. Art Basel's a spectacle for high-end art galleries mm -hmm. that they're selling the Picassos and Andy Warhols and Basquiat's. Right. You're looking at you know million dollar plus art. Wow. Yeah, I know. I've been there many times. Or emerging artists that are like hot, hot, hot that the gallery brings in. Okay. So you know the. Spect Spectrum is still like, you know, you're talking 60,000 qualified people walking through. Yeah, it's amazing. All of the events there that weekend are amazing. So I've the done that. The whole week, I guess. It's I've a whole done week. that a couple of times. Art Expo New York. And uh, so, so then I, you know, I was just like lived in Aventura for a long time and then my wife and I moved to Parkland. Now, how did you find your wife, or how did she find you? I always think that's an interesting question. It was kind of like love at first sight. Since I'm looking for my soulmate. I was in a loud venue. We were, we were both there, and I was drunk. I had about a week's worth of beer. How romantic. I had about a week's worth of beer <laughs> on. And, you know, my wife is, the particular time I met her, she looked like she stepped out of a James Bond movie. Why is that? She she was just absolutely stunning, like out of my league totally. Wow. And what did you do that charmed her? I Let's get I give some advice up, to these I men out here. I walked up to her. I couldn't talk to her because the music was loud. And her, 
her girlfriend knew me and told me to go sit down, leave her girlfriend alone. Oh. And she didn't know that she so said my, that. My buddy, who was at the party with us. The first party? The sec first and second party. Oh, he, oh he okay. He was there I know at that particular about, yeah. time. And he pushed me out. I don't know my... if we can say his name. Can we say his name? It's Steve Leeds. Okay. He's a real estate agent, too. Right, okay. And she, he picked me up by the arms and threw me at her. How'd that go over? Well, I didn't know what to do because <laughs> I couldn't talk to her because she couldn't hear me. So I just put my arms around her, and that was the way it, it started. I just We just sat there and kind of slow danced all night. Well, you have an interesting look to you. You were asking me before the show, you know, uh, when you first came, when I first saw you come walking down the the street with uh, these one of these producers here, and uh, I was like, I was like, is that Ken? You know, because I couldn't really tell. You've got a real a, amazing look to you. You know, Thank you so you've much. got like a look of um, money and professionality, and also kind of a little wild look a little <laughs> wild hair you know like the colorful shirt matching shoes you know i'm trying to remember who it is that he reminded me of you know it's someone like um i don't know i don't even i don't know i don't want to i'm not i'm never really good at names but um this guy has got an amazing look to him and if you see the pictures of us that i took at the at the christmas party he looks like i mean it's hugh hefner he looks like Hugh Hefner. <laughs> when sitting between me and his wife on the couch, you know, and his wife is just a doll. I'm so glad I got to know her this year because she found out that I wasn't after you and that it was no problem that you liked the Bean Tracy <laughs> show or no, podcast. She knows, she knows I'm here and she's good with it. She, good. she liked the interview we did at the, at the shop. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I, I, so you'll see a, a little bit as... Um, this went on. We just shot a little bit. I went and visited his store where he sells the art. And um, so now what is it? What's your favorite way to create? Because I know you talked to me about a different, couple different things you do at the store. I like to do a lot of different things. Like, I, like I, I, I can paint very well, of course. Yeah, that's what I noticed. But sometimes I get bored and want to go off on another tangent and do something different creation. Yeah. Like sometimes I'll make furniture. Oh, okay. And, and uh, I make those guitars. Yeah, I saw the guitars. You see the guitars in the video so right there. I make there. guitars for fun. I do a lot of different things. Right here. I don't know. I don't know where it is. <laughs> so I really like running my business. I mean, I like... You like being I, a I business I used to be owner. adversarial with other artists, and mm -hmm. now I have every artist coming to me and we're all friends and i like that yeah it feels much better that's awesome um now tell me so what is the biggest show you've ever been to you did spectrum what is is that the biggest show yeah and then what where did we're that's where, a pretty big show it is a huge show is it just once a year yes um where will they besides your store is there anywhere else that they people would see your art um it's in the heart of Delray, it's at uh, also it's it's featured in Sazio on Atlantic Avenue, which okay. is a very famous restaurant. And I did a mural. It's like thirty-five feet in the air, wow. inside of a turret in there. And uh, my paintings are everywhere in there for sale. And I'm also in Aventura at Gallery Art, and I'm in the Hamptons on Southampton, oh. uh, on Main Street. Okay. 12 pieces there, and I'm represented by a legendary representative by the name of Marilyn Goldberg, and she's in New York. Okay. And she does a, sends me a lot of people, to, and she also promotes my work, and she actually had the representatives from the Vatican come to my shop. Five people from the Vatican came to my shop. Why did she do that? Because they came and bought <clears throat> NFTs from me. And what do, does NFT stand for? Non-fungible tokens. Okay. And they bought two NFTs, one one of this Jesus I painted, and the other Mona Lisa. 
I painted. So they oh, bought, wow, that's they bought two of them. And then they took prints of the work to the Vatican. And they were, they were signed by, uh, they were presented to the Pope and signed by the ambassador to the Vatican and also the Mo Monsignor of the Arts. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. So that, that happened. Okay, so can you describe your creative ability? How would you describe it? It comes from, I have to do it. I have, I feel compelled. I get, That's what I was going to ask you. What inspires you? Is well, I, I have a compulsion to question. do it. I can, I'm not happy unless I'm doing something. You have to be creating. I have to. Okay, that's wonderful. Now, does your wife have any of these creative abilities too? Or uh, she's the muse. <laughs> she inspires you. Well, yeah, she, she inspires does. you. She that's does. wonderful. How long have you been together? Twenty-five years. Last October. Married twenty-five years. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. We have a daughter, and she lives in New York City, in Manhattan, and uh, and um, she's doing really well. That's wonderful. Now tell me, what is different about what you create, the kind of art you create, and then these other artists out there? Okay, several times in my career I've had a style. Right. And what happens is people knock you off. Right. They knock you off, and then all of a sudden you're like lost in the crowd of people trying to do what you're doing. Right. So the hardest thing an artist can do is to come up with a, uh, a style that's all their own and it's distinctive and they know it's you right away. Right. That's not copyable. Right. That's the trick. Okay. And have you done that? I did that. <laughs> Ooh, good. I'm on pins and needles. Did you do that? Did you do it? What'd you so, do? <laughs> So, but that's the, that's the hardest thing. So for 35 years, I quit painting paintings and did murals in people's homes because I had the reputation from all the restaurants and clubs I did. Right. And I, I did it all over the country, too. I was not just in Miami. I was, like, in Boston and New York and other places as well. Okay. Connecticut. And... So I, I painted murals in people's homes. Okay. And I had some pretty high f profile clients. That's amazing. And um, I'd spend months in people's houses or sometimes I'd go back over and over for years. Can you say whose houses you were in? I cannot. I didn't figure you would, but I thought I'd ask. But I'll, I'll tell you, it's professional athletes <laughs> and um, Actors and like Palm Beach High Society, Mar-a-Lago right. crowd. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, I can tell you have a very good reputation and a, and you're very well known because I have asked a few people since we met, and I'm surprised when they say, "Yeah, they they know you, they follow your art." I've been around in South Florida since '83, like I said, and and I met a lot of people. I networked better than anybody and so, some of these people have come and gone and I'm still here. Yeah. Well, that's I was just talking to my sister Jacqueline this morning. That is the key. You just have to keep being there, right? That's the key to survival. Well, and you have to adapt to what's happening because what can happen is you're an artist and all of a sudden the rules change overnight and you don't know it. <laughs> like what? What rule changed? Well, um I was in the decorative art business. I was painting murals and and I was in people's homes and all of a sudden one day to the next it's not it's not good anymore. It's not in style. Oh, okay. So now, what do you do now? Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. But I'm glad because I decided I did not want to do it anymore either. I kind of had it with these people. And I decided that I would do my thing and do what makes me happy. I think that's wonderful. Instead of trying to make everybody else happy, which is very difficult. It very, is, very difficult. It is difficult. 
You know, you're, our, I think that our innermost feeling is to make other people happy, other people proud of us, other people to appreciate what we're doing. And then when they don't, you have to just know that you are happy with well, what you're doing. Well, I decided I was going to do what I want to do. Yeah. And that really works. And you know what? People are attracted to that, right? Yes. People are really attracted to they that. They are. It's amazing. I'm like, I was, I'm, I'm stunned of how far I've gone since I did that first painting. It was like the first of my style, which was in May 24th, 2019. Wow. And I've parlayed that, that whole thing started and then I'm, I've got a pretty damn good business going. You sure do. And a, and a uh, art gallery and, uh, and my Giclée factory. And also, I, I have that scanner that I invented. That's well, that's what I was going to ask you about next. I was going to say, uh, is your business now more production, reproduction of prints, or is it more you creating an original print? What is the no, I, folk of your business The now? way it started is I, I wanted to create prints for myself because I needed to get my work out there. And I was, right. it couldn't be, be a more, it had to be affordable in more than one place. Right. So I was spending a fortune to have it done. Right. So I got some expensive equipment and started messing around with it. And I'd already had a big printer in my closet. Right. It was like 24 inches, but it wasn't anything, you know, I knew how to work it. But I, uh, I got good at it in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And I, um, somebody gave me a printer, a right. big printer, a 64 inch printer. Right. And I had that for about a year and it completely died. It had brain damage. <laughs> so I had to buy some good printers. So I bought two huge printers. Okay. And then I, so everybody comes to me. I've got like, endless supply people come in like all day long and i scan their art just so you if you want to know on youtube i posted yesterday um a video showing my visit to ken's studio and this amazing printer that he has and uh and all of his prints if you want to see what what he has going on right there in his store it's like a five minute video and he offered to have anybody that calls up and orders anything for, he's going to offer you 15% off, right, Ken? Exactly. And um, it, all you got to do is say the keyword Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y, okay? And then he's going to make sure that you get the best deal on his properties there, on things he creates. Anyway, this scanner, I'm the only person that can scan a, a large painting. Right. Because I made it so that you could put a 10-foot painting up to 10 feet. That's amazing right it, there. 10 feet is the limit because that's the size of the area that I'm working right. in. Right. So it's 20 feet. So Right. Well, that's amazing. Well, I was going to ask you my next, my final question is where do you see your art or art going in the future? Well, AI is kind of taking over and it kind of worries me, but I kind of hope that... Uh, How do you think it's taking over? How would you say well, that? Well, people are coming into my shop with art they created on AI mm -hmm. all day, all the time. Okay. And AI, that's like over the computer, you mean? Artificial intelligence created images. Okay. They, they put a couple of words in, tell them what they want, and it pops out with what they're asking for. Yeah. And... I, I hope that the, that doesn't take away from the the handwork, the, the the heart and soul of an artist. Right. Sure. So that there's that, and plus I use AI to fix people's art because people come in with an iPhone picture, right? And it's terrible. It's like two megabytes. Mm hmm You know, I'm used to working with stuff that's at least between. 30 megabytes and three gigabytes. So what I do is I take the photo and put it through an AI software and it, right. it upscales the picture without it pixelizing. You can 
blow it up really big and it smooths everything out. Yeah. And it's beautiful, much better than the original picture. So AI can do some good things too. Yes. Right. All right. Well, I think that's amazing. Well, you know what time it is now, Ben. Ding, ding, ding. Do you know what time it is? Because I talked to you about changing vlog time. Do you know what time it is? I think I know what time it is. It's vlog time. <laughs> but today vlog time is going to be about how does it make you feel? Because I've been run walking around in my life and writing things on my phone when I notice something makes me feel some way. Okay, Ken, and you're going to be involved in this today. Okay, so the things that have made brought a feeling to me, I wanted to see how they make it makes you feel when you see this. So the first one is, is how does it make you feel when you're at a lunch meeting or some kind of a meeting and the person talking to you is spitting food at you? Ooh. How does that make you feel? Ooh. How does that make you feel, Ken? It makes me feel sorry for them. It makes you feel sorry for them. It makes me think that they don't have um, any manners. Okay. And, and it makes me feel bad for them that they don't have manners. Well, me, it makes me cover every, move everything farther away from where they're talking, you know? And if I'm on a date, I'm thinking, and as I'm watching them spit stuff around their lips, I'm thinking... Do I want to kiss this person? No. I think you're no. figuring out a way to ditch Not want to kiss you this leave person. Him sitting at the table. <laughs> Not going to kiss the guy that's got food spitting out oh, all over his mouth. I'm just going to say. And it just makes me think like sometimes I, like that'll happen to me and they'll be talking and spitting and then it'll land on my hand. You know, has that ever happened to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so what do you do? It depends on who it is. <laughs> <laughs> How do you want to have that spit inside you? Okay, that's one. That's my first one. My second one is how does it make you feel when you see a man walk in carrying a backpack? Dork. <laughs> me? It makes me think. Terrorist. I'm not attracted to that guy. I'm not attracted. And then I was thinking about it. Like, this has been an ongoing thing with me. Like, when I see a man walking around with a backpack, Ben, do you carry a backpack? I do not carry. I, I, <laughs> I thought I, you were going to say yes. I carry no? a satchel. I carry a satchel. A satchel. Yeah. Ben, we you call that a, a backpack. Man purse? Is that a, pack, a backpack? We call that a backpack, Ben. Really? What about a man purse? <laughs> A man purse. Uh, no, man purse. No. Like, when I'm with a man and he says, let me go get my purse. <laughs> How does that make you feel? I don't even want to hold a purse. So anyway, uh, I and then I was thinking, well, what do I expect the guy to do? He's probably got a lot of stuff to carry, right? So I was thinking maybe carry a briefcase. What is how does it make you feel when you see a guy carry a, or a man carry a briefcase or a woman? I, I guess it just. I mean, I'm not being that, sexual they're here. Professional and got. Got it going on. Hey, you got yeah. If they're carrying a briefcase, that it looks like they're on top of the world, right? Right. So, backpack versus briefcase. Okay, that's one, another one. Um, also, I went to a co couple of conferences. I'm going to conferences now. I'm learning. I'm Every weekend, I'm learning. I'm learning about podcasting. I'm learning about real estate. You name it. This girl is a, a lifetime student, and I will be in class with a billion people in the room. All right, I'm exaggerating. Maybe just 100. And the woman next to me will talk to herself and answer questions that the moderator or the teacher is talking about. You know, now, how does that make you feel, Ken? When you're in the middle of a class learning, you're into the message, and then you hear someone next to you talking to herself, answering questions to herself. Like, how does that make you feel? It makes me think she must have uh, some ear pods on. She's talking, having a conversation. Okay, I guess that's a thought. How does that make you feel, Ben? <laughs> um, Has that ever happened to you? No, I'd probably try not to pay attention to it. It'd probably be a little distracting. It's distracting. I got to say it's distracting. To me, it's distracting. I try not to pay attention to what other people are doing at all. Well, that's a good... All right, you're better than me, I guess, because 
annoyed me, I'm going to say. I'm thinking about what I'm going to be doing. All right, next one. You make a grand exit. You say, goodbye, goodbye, everyone. You give hugs and kisses to everyone. They're all feeling really good about you. And you you're, you make your grand exit, and then you leave, and you get out of, outside of the office or the room, and you are like, ah. I got my keys. I left my purse <laughs> in the room. Or I left my keys in the room. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Ken, when that happens? Like, you have to walk back in like it's it's almost like it's like you're demoted. You're demoted because right. you're not as cool as you appeared. Right. You're not as cool. I mean, you looked like you had you had the world by your by its tail. I, I do not care if they think I'm cool. You walk in, you're <laughs> like, and then you're like, uh, I forgot my keys. I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> like, how does that make you feel? I just don't care. Doesn't matter. Mm -mm. Ben, how does that make you feel? I almost make a joke out of it. I almost am like, right. oh, hey, you thought I was gone? <laughs> yes. I'm back now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, get exactly. to see, you get to see me again now. <laughs> okay, next one. All right, you're looking for your soulmate on a dating app. Ben, I know that you've done this before. I know that you haven't ever done dating apps, right? No. All right, you're, you're looking for your soulmate on the dating app, and you run across a picture of a guy or a girl. I don't know, probably girls do this too, like this. With their tongue out. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Well, it's better than... A... Are you attracted? Are you attracted? Or no? It's better than if Is... they're doing double flip-offs. Like, let's just, <laughs> let's just get... Like, what... what... What audience are they attracting with the tongue out? I'm just wondering. I mean, and I did a nice tongue. There are some really nasty tongues that I've I, seen. I guess they, they're trying to hint that what they're going to do with that tongue. That's what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. And it doesn't attract a woman of class. Let me just say that right now. It does not attract anybody with class. I didn't even know guys did that. I didn't even know that was. I oh, thought really? that was more girls. I thought that, that was a more girl thing. Girls do that. Gr most girls, a lot of yeah. girls do that. Yeah. Oh, I never see girls on dating I apps. I didn't even know that was a guy thing. Yeah, to guys do. Never, do that. I never looked at a dating it's app. So but I've seen, I've it's seen so disgusting. It's so disgusting to me. I, I keep getting these uh, women that want to be friends with me, and they're like, like obviously young, uh, and they're half naked, and they. They want to be friends with me, and then I go and look at their profile, and they've got like one picture, and it's like in Arabic or something. Yeah, you got to be careful. Some there's so many people out there that hack and do all and that. And they got stuff. their tongue out. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. Next one. All right. What draws your attention? Ben, I'm going to ask you too, so you better be listening. Better be paying attention, Ben. The producer, my producer over there, Ben, you better be paying attention. We're drawing you into this too, because I know you're, you've got thoughts of your own. Um, what draws your attention? Short and curvy or lean and tall? Me? What do I like as far as the way a woman looks? Yeah. I like curves. Short and curvy. What do you like, Ben? Short and curvy. Well, it just so happens I'm in the right room then. <laughs> but for me, I'm going to say I'm looking for a man that can protect me. So I'm always going to want the bigger guy with muscles, taller guy with muscles. Or, hey, he can be a little guy, but he's got to have muscles so he can protect me because you just never know what being Tracy is going to come up against. You know what I'm talking about? Does that make sense? Sure. Ben? <laughs> it does. It does. I like it. I like it. All right. All right. Next. Ben will protect you. <laughs> ben, you got muscles? Oh, I've got I've got big muscles under here. <laughs> just just they're hidden. I promise. Right. Okay. I got just a couple more. So when you are waiting to use the bathroom and a long line of people, I don't know if this happens in the men's bathroom. There's a long line of people. You're waiting to use the bathroom and you hear the person inside the stall drying her hands. So she's washing her hands and she's drying her hands. Is, is there a stall in the men's bathroom where you, where you can like hold a line up even more by not coming out and washing your hands in the bathroom, but by staying in the stall and washing your hands? There's this usually, annoys me! There's usually a dryer off to the side that's not yet in the toilet. Ben? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that is something that we women have to deal with. Like we're waiting in line. We're all there's a line out the door, yet, 
and there's a sink in the bathroom, yet there's a person in the stall going to the bathroom, looking at herself in the mirror, washing her hands, drying her hands, like there's no tomorrow, okay? I'm just gonna say, how does, how would that make you feel? It is what it is. I just would, uh, there's, there's worse things. <laughs> Ben, how would that make you feel? Uh, I'm going to have to go with Ken, <laughs> Ken on that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, last one, last one. Okay, you're at a full Starbucks. And this happened to me recently because I've got this Starbucks group that I go to. It's got a bunch of locals in it. And the funniest thing about Starbucks is that Seinfeld was so completely on to these people at Starbucks. There's a man in the local group that shows up early sits down in a chair, moves these chairs around him in a circle. Oh, let me get this out of my way. And so it's a full Starbucks. Nobody has a place to sit. Every, and I'm sitting over here watching as people come up and ask him to use one of the chairs. And he's like, oh, no, there are people coming. There are people that are going to come and sit down. How would that make you feel, Ken, if you saw that? If you're, you're sitting there in a chair and you know that the Starbucks is completely full and someone is holding a bunch of chairs up that they won't let anybody sit in. That, that's, that annoys me a lot. Right. Yeah, how about you? I would say you got to be considerate to other people. Yeah. Right? That's not considerate, right? Not at all. Like, right. how long can you hold a chair before someone gets there? Exactly. Right? All right, well, that's that completes my blog time today. And now I guess it's time for the Real Estate Minute. The Real Estate Minute. <laughs> okay. Today's Real Estate Minute is by the Orlando Cent uh, Sentinel, December 29th, 2023, re just recently. Uh, they shared this article by Matt Ott. The average long-term mortgage rates dip for ninth straight week. Okay. Freddie Mac says mortgage rates slid to the lowest ever since May. Economy remains on firm ground with solid growth. The average long-term U.S. mortgage rate re retreated for the ninth week to reach its lowest level since May. Okay. Uh, the average rate on a 30-year mortgage dipped to 6.61% and from 6.67% last week. Mortgage buyer Freddie Mac said Thursday, a year ago, the rate averaged 6.42%. Borrowing costs on 15-year fixed rate mortgages, popular in homeowners refinancing their home loans, also inched down this week, with the average rate falling to 5.93% from 5.95% last week. A year ago, it averaged 5.68%, Freddie Mac said. Heading into the new year, the economy remains on firm ground with solid growth, a tight labor market, decelerating inflation, and a nascent rebound in the housing market, Sam Cater, Freddie Mac's chief economist, said. Mortgage rates have been easing since late October when the average rate on a 30-year home loan reached 7.79%, the highest level since May or since late 2020. The decline has tracked the trajectory of the 10-year Treasury yield which lenders use as a guide to pricing loans. The yield, which in mid-October surged to its highest level since 2007, has been falling on hopes that inflation has cooled enough for the Federal Reserve to shift to cutting interest rates after yanking them dramatically higher since March of 2022. The Fed has opted to not move rates at, this, at its last three meetings, which has also given the financial markets a boost. Investors expect for future inflation, global demand for U.S. Treasuries, and what the Fed does with its benchmark federal funds rate can influence rates on home loans. The sharp run-up in mortgage rates that began early last year has pushed up borrowing costs on home loans, reducing how much would-be would be home buyers can afford even as home prices have kept climbing due to a stubbornly low supply of properties in the market. That's weighed on several 
uh, sales of previously previously occupied U.S. homes, which are drawn down uh, 19.3% during the lat or during the first 11 months of 2023. When it was 3.11%, the large gap between rates now and then contributes to the low inventory of homes for sale by discouraging homeowners who locked in rock bottom rates two years ago from selling. Some of the housing economists are forecasting that home sales will increase next year, 2024, assuming that mortgage rates ease further. So... Anyway, that's where that's where we are right now in the real estate market. That's your real estate minute. And I am so grateful to be here and and be able to share some information with you about Ken Bieberman and his art center and uh and and you know, please reach out to me if you're working with a realtor right now. Um, reach out to them, have them help you find, buy, sell, invest in the greatest property for you. And if you're not, reach out to me. My number's there on the screen. And I've got a team all across the world, especially in the United States. I've got people that I know can really help you the best because Keller Williams agents are the best. We're the most educated and we're the most qualified to help you find and deal and get negotiate the best deal for you. Uh, Ken, can you give your information on how people can contact you? Yeah, um, the name of my company is Art Repro, A-R-T space R-E-P-R-O, and the website is artrepro.net, and you can see my art at www.bieberman.com, and if you would like to call me, you can call me at 954-547-0095. We're going to get that number on the screen for you, too, aren't we, Ben? We'll get that number on the screen for him. <laughs> anyway, please subscribe, like, share, subscribe. The most love you can give to my podcast today will help us both out so more people see it. Um, it's on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple, and all the major podcast stations. And we're here to serve you. So please message down below. Let me know what you think of this podcast, what you want to see more of, and how I can help you reach your real estate goals and your lifetime goals. I'm here to serve you, okay? It was so nice, and it was so wonderful to talk with you. Do you have anything else to add, Ken? I don't know. Um, um, yeah, you might... You Check out my artwork on Bieberman.com, and I'm sure you'll be amazed. And be sure to use code word Tracy to get 15% discount on any of his artwork, as well as you can see the video I posted on YouTube. Okay? Talk to you soon, guys. Sending you lots of love. I hope this is a great week for you and a fantastic year. And we're not saying Happy New Year anymore. We're saying... Happy year. Have a great year, guys. Talk to you later. Thanks Bye -bye. for having me, Tracy. Thanks for coming, Ken. <laughs>